All right, so the part that I want to focus on today in the book of Joshua chapter 1 is verses 7 to 9. Verses 7 to 9. And I'll just read them again. Verses 7 to 9. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt, make, uh, shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither thou be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. So on Sunday I preached on the Bible. On Sunday I preached on the preserved, pure Word of God that we have in our hands, the King James Bible. But I didn't really expand upon that. I just really went through just to prove to you that, hey, God has delivered on His promise, has delivered the Word of God to us. We have it in the English language, in the King James Bible. But now that we have the Bible in our hands, what are the principles, what are the main things that we need to do with the Word of God? I mean, obviously it's a book. Obviously we need to read it. But there is, there is more truth, uh, there are more things that we can do with the Word of God than what you may realize. Because when you think of a novel, when you think of just a storybook, obviously all we can do with that is read it, and then maybe reread it. But there's not a lot that you, more you can do with a, with a storybook. With the Word of God, there is so much more, there's so much more instructions that we can take and, and commit to our lives. And basically, I really want to preach for 20 minutes, I'm going to try my best but I've got six points, so I've got to get through these points pretty quickly. Okay? But have a look again. Verse number seven. What did God ask um, Joshua to do? We can take a few points from here. He says, um, he says, look, you're about to go and, and fight a war. You're about to go and battle in the land uh, that he's promised you. Be strong and courageous. How many times did we read that in this chapter? God says, hey, be strong and very courageous. And then it says this in verse 7, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. So God's saying, hey, be strong, be courageous. Why? To do all the things in the law. Yes, to fight the battles, but more importantly, to take the law, the scriptures that uh, Joshua had that had been passed down from Moses, and to observe to do all these things. Neither turn away from it to your right hand or left. So stay focused on the word of God. And then it says that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Do we want to prosper in our lives? We talk about the prosperity gospel, right? People teach that, you know, if you're not rich, if you're not healthy, then you're not right with God. You know, you, you, you know in order for you to prosper in this life, you've got to be right with God. But hey, there is a prosperity. There is a prosperity that we can read about in the Scriptures. But that prosperity comes from knowing God's Word. That prosperity comes from, from reading His Word and not turning away from it. Hey, the prosperity isn't just financial. Yes, there is financial advice in the Bible. Yes, there's advice you can take on board and, 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 and grow financial, of course. But there's so much more you can prosper from. It's not always going to be financial. It might be a peaceful life. It might be just peace with God. It might be rearing your children and having a, a great relationship with your children rather than rebellious children that make your life difficult. There is many ways we can prosper in life. And God promises um, Joshua, if you stick to my word, if you speak, stick to the law of God, that I'll make your way prosperous. And then look at verse number 8. The, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So what's, what's Joshua all to do? Not just read, but speak God's word. Right? It shall not depart. And then it says, but thou uh, shalt meditate. It's another instruction. Hey, meditate on my word, he says. Right? And again, thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. Again, verse 9, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid. Guys, we live in a wicked world. We live in a world that hates our Lord, that hates the Word of God. That It just seems whatever new laws, whatever new ideas, whatever is fashionable, always just seems contrary to the Word of God. But God does not want us to be afraid. He wants us to be able to take His Word and stand on His Word and be like Joshua, and fight those battles. Obviously, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities. But we can stand on God's Word and, and be a light for Him in this evil generation that we live. So I just want to break down these few points, and we've taken some from them from, from the book of Joshua. But number one, the first thing that I want you to do with the Word of God is to hear the Word. 
Number one, hear the word. Romans 10, 17. We know this one, Romans 10, 17. We go out preaching the gospel. It says, so then faith cometh by what? How does faith come? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we go out and we preach the gospel to the lost, what are we doing? What are we doing for them, for their sake? We're taking the word of God and we're having them hear the word of God. We're begging them to hear it. You know, thank God today I went soul winning. I went to a, a little mountain. It was a lot more receptive than Aruna was. I was really encouraged because we, we didn't get anyone saved today, but we, we, we got to speak um, the gospel to a, to a number of people. So very encouraging. But you know, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get them to hear the word of God. Why? So their faith can come. So they can believe on Jesus Christ because it comes from the power of God's word. Hey, you might be a very eloquent speaker or you might be very poor with words, but if you take God's word, that's where the power is and that's what's going to cause someone to have faith on Christ. You know, I remember the very first time, the very first time I went soul winning, I went with a guy um, and he was, he was younger than I was. So I was about 20, he might have been 19, something like that. He was very young and uh, he was, you know, we, we knocked doors and, and there was finally someone that gave him the time of day to, to present the gospel. And he was so nervous, he was stuttering. Uh, I couldn't follow his logic. I couldn't follow where he was going. But the guy got saved. <laughs> it was, so it wasn't, I, I learned, it wasn't his skills. It wasn't his eloquent, eloquent words. It was just the word of God, the power of word, the, God's word, the, the hearing of God's word that brought faith upon that individual and believed on Jesus Christ. There's been times where I've, even when I came back from Chile, I was very rusty on the gospel and I gave the gospel and I felt like I wasn't following my usual pattern. I wasn't as confident as I was. But yet the guy got saved. So, you know, there's been numerous times where I've seen just people not, not really presenting the gospel that clearly, but the person still understood it because the Word of God planted a seed in their heart and it grew from there. So the first thing, hey, hear the Word. Now, what's interesting about this, the phrase, hear the Word of the Lord, appears 24 times in the Old Testament. Hear the word of the Lord. And also, hear the word of God appears five times in the New Testament. So God commands us, hey, hear my word. We know, yes, we ought to read, but we also ought to hear his word. And uh, that's why we come to church. You know, we come to church to hear Bible reading. We come to church to hear, you know, the word of God being preached. Because there are certain things that you're going to learn in church that you won't learn otherwise just at home. There are certain things that the Spirit of God will bring to the, His people that you're not going to get if you miss out on church. It's important to be in church and to hear God's Word. All right? And I have nothing, you know, I'm not against if you want to hear other preachers online or other preachers on CD or what, what have you. Hey, it's great because we're commanded to hear His Word. All right? Don't turn there, but Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 29. Jeremiah 22, 29. Um, it says, God's saying, uh, it says He, O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. It's so funny, three times, oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. You know, the word of the Lord isn't just for the believer, but also for the whole earth. We need to preach the gospel. We need to make it known. You know, I was, I didn't want to put my sermons on YouTube, but I realized we need God's word out there. We need people to just come across it by accident the unbelieving world, hear God's word and just realize just how far gone they are from the word of God, just how far away they've gone and, and realize, man, you know, God's word is so different to what we see in the world today. And so, hey, we need to preach God's word, not just to God's people, but to the whole earth. The whole earth needs to hear the word of God, but also the word of God needs to be heard by God's people. Isaiah 66 verse 5 says, Hear the word of the Lord. Okay, hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. So those of you that have a fear of God, those of you that have a high respect and honor for the Lord, you, ye that tremble at his word, why, your brethren that hateth you and cast you out of, out of sorry, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. So even in the Old Testament, we say, hey, hear the word of God. Why? Because God knows there are those that will persecute you. There are those that hate you. 
that those that will cast you out for God's name's sake, for the name of Jesus Christ. And if we stick to the word of God, we hear his word, it allows the Lord to be glorified and it allows us to be filled with joy so that they shall be ashamed, according to, to Isaiah. So point number one, I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Now I've got six points. If you find yourself doing one out of the six, then, then your, 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 your walk with the Bible is not balanced. Okay, you need all six points. Okay, if all you do is hear the word, if all you do is go online and listen to preaching or come to church and listen, but you don't read the word, then you're not balanced. You need all these six things in your life. Okay, so number one, hear the word. Number two, read the word. Right, basically, read the word. Number two, Exodus 24, verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, all the Lord have said we will do and be obedient. So we are instructed in both the Old Testament and the New Testament to read His Word. And let me give you a story very quickly here. Turn with me to Matthew, to the book of Matthew in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 verse 1. Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. Who were the Pharisees? <clears throat> Remember the Pharisees in the time of Jesus Christ? These were people that were the religious leaders, right? They were people that had studied the law of God. They had spent time studying. They were the ones teaching the word of God in the times of Jesus Christ. And let's look at the, the Pharisees here in verse number 1. Matthew 12, <clears throat> At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. So Jesus is going through this field of corn. His disciples are hungry. They start to pluck the ears and to eat it. Verse number two. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Right? So these Pharisees see what the disciples of Jesus are doing. Hey, you're wrong. You're working on the Sabbath day. I mean, they're just, they're just eating. They're just plucking ears off the corn and eating. They're saying, hey, you're breaking the Sabbath day. You're not doing that which is lawful. Verse number three. But he said unto them. So this is Jesus. Jesus said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger and, they were, and that they were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? And so I'm not going to go through the reasons that they, you know, uh, what Jesus was teaching right now, but I just want to point out to you, what are the two questions that Jesus asked the Pharisees? These Pharisees that are meant to know the word of God. He said twice, have you not read, right? Verse number three, have you not read what David did? Verse number five, have you not read in the law? Man, I would be so ashamed. I would, you know, I'd be so ashamed if, if I meet my Lord and he says to me, Kevin, have you not read? You know, we've got the whole Bible available to us here. You know, we've, we can read it cover to cover. We can read it again and again and again. You know, the, the Word of God is not restricted to us here in Australia. I'd be so ashamed if God said to me, Kevin, have you not read? We are to read God's Word. And too often, we have people study God's Word, which is okay. They study God's Word, but they don't read God's Word. We're instructed over and over, we're instructed more often to read God's Word than to study His Word. All right? And this is what I find. And look, I do have study. That's point number five. Study God's Word. We ought to study God's Word. But what I find sometimes, and look, I, I don't blame, especially new, new believers, New believers, they get excited. They want to know what God has to say. And then, like, usually, oh, what's going to happen in the future? Let's go to Revelation. And they'll study Revelation. Or they'll listen to stories. And then they'll be like, oh, what's, uh, uh, divorce and marriage. They'll study divorce and marriage. All right, let's go through. And then they'll be like, oh, what's another thing that's interesting? Um, you know, whatever. You know, they'll have a priority list of things that interest them. And that's okay. I understand. I've been there. I've been excited. And there are things that you want to study. But sometimes people spend so much time studying God's Word, trying to look up a topic and comparing, but they have not read God's Word. They don't know God's Word. They don't know all the books of the Bible. They don't know what certain books are about. They don't know what certain books, what time uh, period that was written. 
Okay? The context matters. You can study, you know, to your heart's content, but you're not really going to know God's Word until you've read God's Word, right? Until you've read it to cover to cover. And, you know, Jesus Christ, there's a reason why He's called the Word of God, because the more you know this Word, the more you know Jesus Christ. The more you love this Word, the more you love Jesus Christ. So nothing wrong with studying. Please don't misunderstand. But please, if you find, if you're someone that finds yourself just studying week after week, just studying a topic after topic, but you've never read it cover to cover, please stop studying. Just stop it. Stop studying and just get reading your word, okay? Just, you know, this is the other thing. When you study, you're choosing the topics that you want to learn, right? But when you read God's word cover to cover, the Holy Spirit chooses for you what you're going to learn. Because you're going you're to come across things that you weren't really thinking you were going to cover. And then you'll be like, oh, that's interesting. And that's the Holy Spirit teaching you. So please read God's Word. Don't just study it. Uh, number three, meditate on the Word. We read about Joshua being instructed to meditate on his Word. Turn to Psalm chapter 1. Please, Psalm chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1. Meditate on the Word of God. Just the first three verses there. It says, Blessed is the man which walketh, sorry, that walketh not in the counsel of the, of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, so this, this man, this blessed man, what does he love? What is his delight? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate, day and night meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper hey there's the prosperity again you know god says hey you know meditate upon my word meditate upon it day and night and if you're not someone that meditates on the the word of god day and night it's because your delight is not in the law of God. You see how the, the one that delights in the law of God is the one that will meditate day and night. So if you don't, you know, try to get into the habit of reading your Bible a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the evening, you know, try to make it a priority. All too often we get busy in life and, and we put off Bible reading because that's easy to do. You know, oh, I'll do it later. Hey, get in the habit of meditating upon God's word day and night. What does it mean to meditate? Uh, it means to think about it, you know? After you read, think, hey, how does this apply to me? How does this truth apply to my life? What can I do, you know? I mean, just, for, just let's take this example. Met, you know, the, his delight is in the law of God, and his law doth he meditate day and night. Okay, let's stop for a minute. Let's stop and meditate on what I just read. You know, just like I said, hey, if I'm someone that's going to delight in God's Word, then I need to meditate on it day and night. And so by thinking about this, by, by just stopping and not, not just, you know, going through the chapter just to, you know, go through your chapter a day to keep the devil away, but to stop and think about, hey, meditate. How does this apply to me? Am I someone that's meditating day and night? Am I someone that delights in the law of God? You know, so that's what I mean by meditate. Just, just focus on a few little things that you've learned. And think about that and try to apply that to your life. Point number four is to memorize the Word of God. Turn to Psalm, actually don't turn there. Uh, Psalm 119 verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now what does it mean to hide God's Word in your heart? How do you get God's Word, which is a written form right here, and you get that and you hide it in your heart? There's only one way, and that's to memorize Scripture. To take Scripture and memorize it, right? So it's in your heart. It's in you. God's, God's Word is in your heart. It's in you. And what's the advantage of, of memorizing His Word? That I might not sin against thee. If you find yourself someone and look we're all sinners i understand we all have weaknesses we all have failings in our life but if you find yourself defeated with sin and you have sin that you're just struggling to overcome well get in god's word meditate on his word the promise is hey you keep that in your heart and you're not going to sin against the lord okay and uh, i should have taken down the reference 
Um, I can probably turn there, but I, I won't just for the sake of time. But you remember the story where Jesus was taken up by the Spirit into the wilderness and he was tempted. You know, he, he was uh, fasting for the 40 days. Remember that? 40 days. And, and, the, and the devil came to him and tempted him, right? And he says, hey, you know, turn this stone into bread. And then, you know, he says, you know, throw yourself from the, from the temple and the angel will catch you up. And then the other one was, hey, worship me. Satan's telling Jesus, worship me and I'll, I'll give you the kingdoms of the earth. You know, you don't have to go and, and sacrifice yourself. You don't need to wait for your kingdom in the future. I'll give it to you right now if you worship me. And every time Jesus Christ responded to the devil, he said, it is written. Jesus Christ referred back to the scriptures. He had it memorized. And we might say, yeah, but Kevin, he was God. And yes, he was God and he, he was the word of God. But we learn about Jesus Christ that he had to grow in knowledge. Yes, he was 100% man, but he was also 100%, sorry, he was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. And so he came to set the example. And we see that Jesus Christ, even he memorized the scriptures and he is our example. We too ought to meditate on the scriptures. So when the devil comes to tempt you to sin, you're ready to give him an answer. You've got the word and you can quote it out loud to him and cause him to depart from you. So point number four was memorize the word. Actually, I've got one other verse here, Colossians 3.16. It says, let the word of God, okay, Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ, sorry, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So I thought this was interesting. You know, it talks about the word of Christ dwelling in you. And then it says, teaching one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. One great way, if you struggle to memorize the word of God, one great way is to put it to music. There's a lot of good scripture songs that basically take the, the words straight out of the King James Bible and translate it into music. And so you can sing along. I mean, you know this is true. I, I know you know certain lyrics of worldly songs and as much as you want to forget them because you know they're worldly and they don't you know please the lord you know when you hear it on the radio you can sing along to those lyrics right why because those words are dwelling in you unfortunately and the reason they dwell in you so easily is because they were attached to certain music that was easy to follow that you enjoyed in your life and so the same principle god is telling us here hey in hymns and spiritual songs we can learn, in psalms we can uh, learn and memorize God's word so that it will dwell in you richly. Okay. Um, number five, study the word. <laughs> Add a go if you're purely studying the word of God. But no, number five, we ought to study the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth now i looked up how many times the bible says study it comes up three times but only once in reference to the word of god so that's what i mean you know reading the word of god the commandment to read god's word and to hear god's word vastly out you know outweighs the study because here's the thing when you read when you hear you are studying god's word anyway but hey you we are also you know are to take god's word as a workman that's not going to be ashamed you know if you're someone that goes to work and you don't know how to use you know let's say you know you work with a computer you don't know how to use a computer you don't know how to use email you don't know how to use microsoft word or if you're a laborer but you don't know how to use your tools you don't know how to you know you, you've, you've gone to college but really you have no knowledge as to do your job what's going to happen to you you're going to feel ashamed right you've got a work to do but you can't even do it and, and you're ashamed and it's the same thing with the Word of God. If you're going to be someone that teaches God's Word behind the pulpit, you know, someone that teaches your family, teaches other people, the instruction is to study. Study God's Word to show thyself approved unto God. Hey, I don't study the God's Word to show myself approved unto you. You know, I, I don't want to look, you know, studious and look wise to you. I want, to, I want to show God that I take His Word seriously, that I stop and study His Word because I want to be approved by God. I want to be approved unto God. Okay? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So if you're someone that knows God's Word, cover to cover, you know the key doctrines, the core doctrines, 
you're going to be finding someone that is not ashamed. You know, when someone asks you a difficult question, you'll be able to, you know, give them an answer or at least point them to the right direction. You might not know everything in the Word of God, but the more you know, the less you need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the Word of truth. God's Word is something that needs to be divided. Okay? Now you have the, uh, um, the um, man-made um, inter interpretive tool called dispensationalism. Some of you guys are aware of that. Dispensationalist. And many of the dispensationalists will say, when it says rightly dividing the word of truth, that means dispensationalism. That means you've got to read God's word with the lens of dispensationalism, and that's how you rightly divide the word of truth. But here's the truth about it. The word of God is already rightly divided for us. Right? We have the Old Testament, we have the New Testament. All right? We understand the New Covenant, the Bible says very clearly that it comes through the death of the testator. So, following the death of Jesus Christ, that's where we understand the New Testament started. You know? So, there are, there are divisions that the Bible itself gives us. The Bible is divided into books. It's divided into chapters and verses. Yes, I know those weren't written there when, when it was first written. But I actually believe the verses and, and the, God's allowed the chapters and the verses in God's Word so we can rightly divide God's Word. So, that, that, you know, God's Word is rightly divided for us already. You know, you already know this. The reason you don't go and sacrifice an animal... It's because you know you're rightly dividing. You know that Jesus Christ was that ultimate sacrifice and that the, the blood of bulls and goats does not satisfy God, does not take away sin. You know that. You, know, you don't go looking for the tree of knowledge of good and evil and say, hey, I can't eat from that tree because that was in the time of Adam and Eve. You know, that tree does not exist for us today. So you know, common sense should indicate to you if you know God's Word that you're going to be able to rightly divide God's Word. But hey, if you only had the Old Testament, you only read the Old Testament and you didn't read the New Testament, you may very well think you still need to sacrifice animals in a temple in Jerusalem. But look, God says, rightly divide the word of truth. So yes, point number five, we need to study His word. Point number six, we need to do the word. We need to do the word. Turn with me to the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. Because, you know, here's the thing. It's all good to hear God's Word, to read God's Word, to meditate on His Word, to memorize His Word, to study the Word of God. But if we're not doing His Word, then you're missing out on the biggest thing. You're missing out, okay? You can be full of knowledge. Hey, you might know, hey, I, I need to love the brethren. But you may not even love the brethren, right? You may know that's something you need to do, but you may not actually practice what you, you, what you know, okay? So God makes it very clear we need to be doers. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, okay? So should we hear God's word? Yes, that's point number one. But hey, again, we need the right balance. We need all these things in our life when it comes to the word of God. Be not, um, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, here's the thing. There are many Christians that know the word of God very well. They know many doctrines, right? But they don't do God's Word, you know? They, they know they shouldn't forsake the assembly of, of the church, but they forsake the assembly, you know? They know they ought to love the brethren, but they don't love the brethren. They know many doctrines, but they don't put it into practice. And if you don't put them into practice, it says you deceive your own selves. Verse 23, For if any be a hearer of the Word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. And so, it gives us this analogy. It's like, you know, if you're someone that doesn't do God's word, you, you look in a mirror, you see yourself in the mirror. For a moment, you can see what you look like. But then you go away, and you totally forget what you look like. Because here's the thing. If you want to retain God's word, if you want to know his word, you need to do his word. You might learn it, tempor te like I have a temporary learning of his word, but if you're not practicing it, you're going to forget it. Just like the natural man that, um, that forgets what manner he is. You know, I, I experienced that. I, I mentioned uh, that I, when I went to Chile, I didn't do any soul winning for three months. I came back and I was very rusty. It's almost like, it's not that I had forgotten, obviously, but when you don't practice it, you do tend to forget God's word and you do tend to forget the knowledge that God has already given you. Verse 25, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, 
This man shall be blessed in his deed. So do you want to be blessed by God? Do you want to be blessed in your works, in your deeds? Then don't be a forgetful hearer. Be a doer of the word. Listen and hear and then do it. Put it into practice. <clears throat> and then I'll just leave you with this. Luke chapter 8, verse 20. Luke chapter 8, verse 20 and 21. And it was told him by certain which said... So, so people came to Jesus. Some people came to Jesus and told him these things. He said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see, to see thee. So the, the mother of Jesus Christ and the, and the half-brothers of him came to see him, wanted to talk to him. Obviously, Jesus was busy. And then Jesus says this in verse 21. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Now, if, you've been, if you're saved, you are a child of God. That makes you a friend of God. Hey, that makes you a brother of Jesus Christ because he's the son of God. You're the son of God. That makes Jesus Christ your brother because we've got God the Father, right? But Jesus says, hey, you know, if you want to be my brother, it's not about salvation, but he's talking about those that hear the word of God and do it, that's, the, his, that's his brethren, okay? It's not the physical that matters. It's the spiritual. It's those that know God's word and does it. If you want to be counted, not, not, I'm not talking about salvation here, but if you want to be counted by Christ as his brethren, his, his family, then you need to not just hear it, but do God's word, all right? So just a quick point. If you're someone that, um, you know, some people struggle to have their kids sit still in church, okay? And look, you know, I, I want to have a family integrated church, okay? I want to I wanna have children here, and I know that children are easily distracted. I know that children make noise, and right now, you know, Sebastian, Sebastian, Johnny, stop. Like right now, even my own children, right, they're talking and getting distracted. But I get asked sometimes the question, how do you make him sit still? I'll tell you how. You get him to sit, especially the younger ones that can't read God's word. You know what they can do? They can hear God's word. All right? So fathers, let me encourage you, especially if you have young children, get in the habit of getting them not just to sit still in church, but at home. Spend time, you know, every day or, you know, just a couple of days during the week. Get in the habit of just sitting your children down and reading God's word to them so they can hear God's word. You know, they can't read it just yet, but they can hear and they can absorb God's Word. We know that children absorb so much more than what adults can absorb, all right? And this is why I want children in the church. I want children to hear the sermon. They're not stupid. We don't need to put them in the Sunday school class. We've, 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 uh, you know, we've watered down lessons. They can actually take in what is being said. And they'll come and ask you sometimes questions of things that they heard. All right, so please, you know, always, you know, have your children in the church. Don't, don't feel afraid or, or don't think that I feel that, I, you know, I think bad of you if your children are making noise. I want them here. I want them to learn just as much as anyone else. But hey, if you want them to sit still in church and, and take in what is being said, you need to put that into practice in your own home. Okay, you can read the word as we've, we've learned and they can take it in and hear God's word. And so let me just repeat those six points once again before we close up today. Number one, hear God's word. Two, read the word. Three, meditate on the word. Four, memorize the word. Five, study the word. And six, do the word. Let's pray.